Okay, recording. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another night of biblical education classes brought to you by the Biblical Education Committee of Fanta Baptist Church. BEC seeks to give uh, theological understanding in various aspects of, uh, uh, of the Christian life. Uh, we've gone through quite a number of series, actually, from the theology of God, the theology of salvation, to the doctrine of the church, of missions, and we've been going through a series on Christian cults. In Christian cults, we've journeyed from the Western world, that is uh, uh, the Mormon church, Jehovah's Witness. Now we've been focusing quite a lot in uh, Asia, Asia region, and tonight we are continuing on the Shinjongji cult. The Shinjongji cult, of course, is relatively new, but they're making headway into Malaysia, so it's important that we are all being made aware of their efforts of wanting to propagate their teaching, which is not consistent with Scripture. But before we go any further, just want to, just want to remind you that uh, your questions are highly valued in this uh, conversation. And uh, just as we said before, the talk will only be 30 minutes long. The Q&A will be followed after and will be an hour, up to an hour long. As many questions as you will, as you will have for our esteemed panel, we would love to engage with it as much as we can. And how is it that you're able to ask questions? Well, you can ask questions either by uh, unmuting yourself at the end of the talk, and then you can ask the questions directly to the panel, or you may uh, start typing out your questions using the chat feature in this Zoom meeting. Before we go any further, it's always good to say a prayer through, uh, to the one true God so that we may know who to be reminded of who he is and what is it that we are facing that is against his gospel. And so without further ado, may I invite the Elder Chin Shi to uh, open the time for us with a word of prayer. Over to you, Elder Chin Shi. Okay, let's commit this time to the Lord. For God, our Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this evening that uh, all of us are able to gather once again to uh, uh, for our BEC class and uh, for the continuation of uh, to study this uh, uh, Korean uh, Christian culture called uh, uh, Chin Chung uh, Ji, pray Lord that uh, you would uh, uh, be with us and bless our time together and be with uh, Pastor Mark as uh, he share uh, uh, what he knows on this uh, this couch and uh, so that we are more prepared uh, should we encounter uh, the uh, adherence of this uh, couch and uh, able to help those who, who got sucked into this couch uh, so that they can get out of it. And also, we pray that uh, you will be with the our panel of uh, teachers that you give them uh, much wisdom uh, to answer the questions some of us may have uh, after the talk. So we commit this time to you, trusting Lord that you will be with us and bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Before I continue, I was wondering, just want to do a sound check. Can you hear me okay? Can yeah, no? Okay. Let me now share my screen. So the big question, just to quickly remind us uh, where we left off. Uh, Shin Jun Ji believes that their founder, Lee Man Hee, is the promised pastor, the second coming of Christ, and one who will usher in the end of the world. Yeah, Of course, Shin Jun Ji is also made famous for being one of the major spreaders of uh, of uh, the coronavirus during the pandemic. And it is believed that through them, the wave of uh, the pandemic really struck Korea to the thousands uh, very, very quickly. And then, we, and then some would speculate that they were actually part of the expansion of the, of the spread of the pandemic into Southeast Asia. Yeah, so that's something to take note of. Uh, that's one thing that they're famous about and they, what they would like to be famous about is they're always wanting to have Bible study camps, Bible seminars among young people and they're also trying. In fact, recently they have, been, they have emailed a bunch of uh, uh, churches, generic emails, wanting to invite uh, pastors to join in their Bible seminar about the second coming of Christ and teaching for Revelation. But of course, in the end of the day, they want to promote their particular belief that the Lee Man He is the, is the promised pastor, the one that will bring in the end of the world, and only through him can we truly be saved. That's their main thing. In fact, the email that was given to many Christian 
pastors in Malaysia recently, they would say that hi, they, they will write something along the lines of hi, we are an independent church called the New Heaven and New Earth Church in South Korea. Now, New Heaven and New Earth, as you have, as I mentioned earlier, is basically <clears throat> what Shin Shonji means. Shin which is new, Cheon, heaven, G, earth. So new heaven, new earth, church. And that is, and so they may call themselves that in English, wanting to deceive us and to think and to say that, oh, this is different from the cult Shin Cheonji, when actually it's in fact one and the same. So remember on Lee Man Ki, he mentions that the 144,000 mention is on the 12 tribes of Shin Cheonji. And therefore, one of the major things about about the, pro about the problem of this church is that they are restorationists, meaning they believe only salvation can only be found only through their particular cult. And while Shin Chongji is used as the name of the independent church, they also have a Christian mission center, which is their educational arm, that they are using to recruit more people. Yeah, And uh, just like any typical Southeast Asia and East Asian community. They like to attract people by giving them these lessons and classes so that they attain some sort of degree or diploma, although it's not accredited at all. Uh, but more importantly, they then get invited to be part of the 144,000 or the 12 tribes of Xinjiangji. So this is Li Man He, yeah, when he's younger and recently when he was just recently released from house arrest. Uh, just a reminder, in 2022, they graduated 106,186 graduates. Uh, and uh, all this is through the Shinshonji and Zion Mission Center. So all these people, this year, they have a chance to be able to be part of the 12 tribes of Shinshonji and therefore have their assured place in heaven. Is it really? But you will find a lot of the, this cult, they will... Uh, make their followers do works in the assumption that is detrimental to salvation. This is an excerpt from the chairman, Li Man He, to say that, except for those who have unavoidable circumstances, graduates from the Zion Mission Center must come to Korea to graduate, to graduate and be registered in the Book of Life, meaning if they don't come to Korea for the graduation service, they will lose their salvation. Yeah? Then, of course, today, please think of the martyrs. Shinjoji is a place created only with only absolute people, meaning only those who come, then they are certain for heaven. You know? Uh, so this is this must be encouraged by every tribe leader. Uh, this is the work of receiving salvation, entering heaven. So they don't even hide the fact that they will hold your salvation hostage in order to... I'm oh, sorry. In order to... Uh, get there in order to tie up their followers to uh, do whatever they say. Yeah? Okay. okay. So these are based on the four big questions. In the end of the day, the major flaw, one of the major flaws is that they also believe in modalism to say that Shin Junji is sometimes is God on earth. He had attained, he had come on this earth before as the Father, as the Son, as the Holy Spirit sometimes, but now special revelation is only given through Liman He, the uh, Liman He, the, the, the second coming of Christ, or the promised pastor. So they would, so Liman He famously claims Revelation 22, verse 16 to mean that he is the that which was prophesied in this verse. Revelation 22 verse 16 says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. So this angel, they claim to be Li Man He, who is the root of Ruth and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. But just looking at Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, we can see who the angel means. The angel is actually the angel that was guiding John, the author of Revelation, through the entire vision of the revelation that he was having. John 1, 1 verse 1 says, the revelation from Jesus Christ which God gave him to show, uh, show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. 
So this is the same angel. Yeah. The other thing about this church is they ask, we, we have to ask them, who are the 144,000? Then what they'll do is that they will parallel their 12 tribes of Shincheonji and say that the 144,000 are basically the symbolic numbers, number of people who are sealed into the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, no longer the 12 tribes of Israel, you know, but now through their cult, then they are confirmed to enter heaven. But very quickly from Revelation 7 verse 4, we can see the same reference to the elect, to these elected people who enter heaven. Basically, it is from Revelation 20 verse 4. It says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So the 144,000 are not from any tribe in particular, but they are known to be the ones who held their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God working in their lives, yeah, they did not worship anyone or anything else, including Lee Man He, the founder. And then they are, and because of their faithfulness, Christ will reward them by having them reign with him for a thousand years. Now, of course, we have done a whole series on eschatology on this verse, but I just want to point here that Revelation 20 verse 4 shows who is part of 144,000. is not faithfulness to a cult, but faithfulness to Jesus Christ alone until the final day. So some questions that we can ask Shin Shionji would be, Oh, sorry, the title is wrong. So it should be Shin Chunji. Yeah. The first question you can ask them is, so you believe that Lee Man He is the promised pastor, right? And only through him can we be saved. And they'll say, yes, that's true. What about those in the Bible who didn't believe in the promised pastor? Because the promised pastor is supposedly revealed in Revelations. But what about all the other apostles and churches, even in the New Testament time? the Ephesian church, 1 Corinthians, Galatians, Thessalonians, none of them knew about this promised pastor in the form of Liman He. So what happens to them? The problem with restorationist churches is that when they have a new revelation and it's alien to the rest of the, of the New Testament, then there's really no way of determining whether the people like the Apostle Paul would be saved through their teaching. But we take the Bible to be the perfect word of God. We already know very clearly that, Christ, that, that Paul, Peter, and the apostles' salvation is nothing to do with their works or their belief in something that happened in the future. But they believe solely in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and in the empty tomb. That's the only thing that precedes them. That's the one thing that was, that was foreshadowed in the Old Testament and made complete in the New Testament. And therefore, the promised pastor becomes a moot position, the promised pastor is shown for who he really is, a false prophet. The other question, of course, is earlier we mentioned about the Zion Mission School, right? And you need, in order to be graduate, in order to be saved, you must grad, you must go for the graduation. If I can't make it to Korea for Zion Mission graduation, no money, not able, am I still sealed? Now, earlier in the statement, you saw that there is a special clause for those who really cannot make it. But is that truly the case? You know, what is really cannot make it? What does it mean? That they were banished, that they were, cannot leave the country by law, you know? And so are they going to allow the government of the land to determine the salvation status of their believer? Would it therefore be easier to be in prison during the time of the mission graduation rather than flying over to Korea and attending it. And then the question still remains, are they truly sealed? Now, of course, in Jesus Christ, this is entirely false. Because only by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, are we then affirmed to be called children of God because of our faith and our, faith and our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ.
The other question that someone asked uh, some time ago, and I was uh, interested to bring it up one day to the Shincheonji group, I should ask them, why couldn't Lee man Hee control the COVID pandemic? Does that mean that he is actually not divine? You can also ask the question, you know, did Lee man Hee really have any control over the pandemic? If the answer is yes, why didn't he stop it? And if he says, and if he says no, it's, it's in accordance to my will as the second or the promised pastor, you know, and if that is true, why did Lee Man He apologize for the pandemic spread? And if Lee Man He, who is supposed to be the, the promised pastor and the second Christ, if he had to apologize, doesn't that mean that he is he has error? That he could do wrong? What kind of God, what kind of founder, what kind of chosen pastor of Jesus be able to do wrong? especially in such a terrible way that is the pandemic. And of course, the question will remain, if Lee Man, when Lee Man He dies, because Lee Man He will die, you know, because he's old already, what, does, what would that mean for you? Your promised pastor is supposed to usher in the, the, the final judgment into the world and making sure that we're all able to be part of 144,000. But if he died before that is accomplished, what could that possibly mean for you? Jesus came and died for our sins to be a penalty and sacrifice on the cross and be put in the empty tomb. But he did not stay in the tomb. Whereas Lee Man He, when he dies, we know for a fact that he will remain in his tomb. Sure, we can wait three days later to see if he rises from the dead, but most likely he's going to be stuck in the ground. What would that mean for the Shin Shonji Church? My guess would be they would have a big existential crisis because I don't know how the theology will be able to sustain if they say that Lee Man He is the promised pastor, the full revelation of God, and he dies. You know what hope does the rest of the group have? And of course, a very simple thing is as of now, Shin Shonji followers. How sure are you that you are going to heaven? Is it only by the graduation? If you graduated from Zion Mission Center, can you then skip Sunday worship or Sabbath worship? Can you skip giving your tithing to Shinjongji? Are you then firm? Are you then firm? Please say if you did not if you did not carry on after your graduation. If the answer is no, then how can you say that the person's name is sealed already? If you say yes, then why are you still letting them, making them do things that which you require them to do in order to be sealed into heaven? So of course that becomes a terrible situation for them. Now, what has happened to Shin Chongji? I am happy to say, thanks to faithful ministries like Salt and Light, like Salt and Light Singapore and fellow Baptist churches like Pantai Baptist Church, we have really made an actual dent into Shin Chongji's efforts into Malaysia. So the Shin Chongji movement came in first and they called in, in, in Penang and they called themselves the Salt and Light Fellowship Penang. And of course, they wanted to hide behind the salt and light organization, you know, to say that they were non-denominational, resource providing, wanting to give opportunities for people to study the Bible together. Yeah. So salt and light Singapore needed to make a statement to say that they are in no fellow, no association with Malaysia, salt and light fellowship, which is which was actually Shin Chongji. And ever since they were outed like that, they took down their website, they took down their Facebook profile. They took down their Instagram profile and now they're coming in calling themselves the New Heaven and Earth Church, a New Heaven and New Earth Malaysia. But everybody knows that basically means Shin Chongji cult and therefore they do not join. There was a time that Salt and Light Fellowship, when they tried to describe themselves, they lied. Now, you have to understand that Lee Man He has given their followers permission to lie about their status, 
about who they really are in order to uh, in order to spread their beliefs uh, as Shinjonji. So when asked, when put in the F in their website FAQ, they were asked the question, uh, who are who are you guys really and what fellowship are you from? The answer, the generic answer is we are a group of students coming from various denominations wanting to study the Bible, although most of us are Baptists. Small b a p t i s t s. Very obvious and very quickly, the Baptist community found that no, that cannot be, that doesn't sound right. And after further discussion about what church they're from and what they do, it is we managed to confirm that they are Shin Chionji. Yeah, and thanks be to God, the Malaysia Baptist Convention sent out an advisory very soon after this ministry tried to launch themselves to let them know that the Salt and Light Fellowship is, uh, is is a cultic group and not to be com and not be confused with the Salt and Light Ministries based in Singapore. And they and we put in quite a number of their details: name of alleged cult in Malaysia, Salt and Light Fellowship. And then we find the extra name is the Shinchonji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, or basically Shinchonji. And of course, we iterate that their founder, the South Korean national by name, Lee Man Hee, at that time he was 88 years old, but now he is 90 years old. Yeah, and frail. What are some things that we can do for those who are in this cult? We can actually take note of this particular website called reddit.com. And in Reddit, what reddit.com really is, is that it is a social, a social uh, free website platform where people can contribute their, where people can ask questions and are able to just give some community answers. Yeah. And thankfully, a lot of former Shinchonji cult followers, they rallied together and took over the reddit.com slash r slash Shinchonji. And so Shinchonji cannot take this as their own. And they decided to uh, accept that they, did, they decided to expose this cult uh, using this social media platform. And I will encourage you, if you to keep this as a bookmark for you so that those who are curious and those who have who are stuck in it, we can share this with them and that begins a conversation with them. As you can read on the slides here, it says that this is a forum about Shin Chonji, a religious high control group that originated from South Korea and functions worldwide. You can post information, ask questions and share testimony. Furthermore, you can comment, vote, discuss, learn, observe, support and connect. This forum is a place for people to share their experiences express their doubts, explain why and how they thought of leaving and receive valuable information in order to make an informed decision about Shin Chonji. So they are neutral, but at the same time, the evidence already speaks for itself. They are an abusive, false doctrine cult. It has become into mainstream media where Vice, which is a secular group, they actually dug deep into the controversial Shinjongji church and found a number of victims that were spiritually abused and manipulated and groomed to be uh, to be merely puppets of their movement. Yeah. So and this became so much of attention that even ex-members of Singapore Shinjongji Church, they were able to tell it all. And thanks be to God, because of their testimony the Minister for Law in Singapore Parliament has issued a ban on the Shinshonji Church and therefore they are not allowed to be propagating in Singapore. I hope that we, I hope that we in Malaysia will be able to have a united voice to remind the Klang Valley community and beyond in all of Malaysia that this cult is anything but orthodox and therefore cannot be trusted. Yeah? Another thing that we can do in order to stir, in order to keep ourselves firm and uh, firm in the word and also fit in, in our gospel representation is to join the, the, the current initiative of everyone can share Christ. Yeah. 
So if you're not in the CG yet, do join the CG. And if you know friends who are not in CG, invite them so that they can go through CE and CG together. And through that, they are able to safeguard and know what does it mean to truly be a Christian and as, oppo and as opposed to uh, cults like Shin Chunji and other groups. Yeah. So make no mistake, doing evangelism as Christians is also part of the solution of answering Christian cults. Because the more we can get the truth of the gospel out there, the more then we have witnessed against the lies of cults like Shin Chunji, like Church of God the Mother, like Jehovah's Witness, like the Mormon Church, and for next week on the another new movement trying to come into Malaysia, the Good News Mission Church. Yeah, all these groups can be very easily thwarted if we as a community take up the gospel knowledge and take up the, the duty to share the good news to Jesus Christ with those who have yet to know him as Lord and Savior. We take that seriously and then Christ will be well represented in community. Yeah. I believe also uh, in, in the weeks to come, we have also started uh, this new movement called I Am a Gem. I Am Gem. I Am Getting Everyone Moving. Where the main objective is for each and every one of us to reach out at least one friend, to share with them about Jesus, to love them, to care for them, and one of the ways of loving and caring for them is to make sure that they do not get absorbed into these extremist groups. They don't get absorbed into these cults for fear that they will be very much misled, misused, and abused. So that is my sharing for tonight. Just nicely, 27 minutes, we are able to cover all of this. And uh, now, we, now, now we come to a time of Q&A. So if you have questions, we would like to invite you to go ahead and start typing out your questions using the Q&A, using the chat feature in this Zoom meeting, or you can even unmute yourselves uh, and uh, be able to and ask the panel directly as well. So at this juncture, I'm inviting uh, Brother Byun Tong and uh, Dr. Tony to join me in the panel. Uh, Brother Hui Su, today is Brother Hui Su and Brother George T's turn to give their thousand apologies. Uh, Brother Hui Su is at the is at the gospel is at the gospel community conference at First Baptist Church Subang Jaya, and uh, George, uh, Brother George is uh, taken uh, taken leave for a personal matter. Yeah, so here we are, and perhaps we want to before we go into questions. I was wondering whether Brother Yun Tong and Brother Tony, is there anything else that you like to add, or would you even like to ask a question for us to discuss as well tonight? Personally, I got no question. <laughs> yeah, I think the right now the population of <laughs> this cult is still quite small, yes. and most of them are in Korea, and of course uh, they are making inroads into our country. It is good to be vigilant and nip nip the trouble in the bud so that they don't spread to all our young people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think this cult doesn't have too much to offer our young people, not in terms of free sex or anything of that sort, you know. Mm. So yeah, so but nevertheless it's always good to be alert and uh, be vigilant and to warn our young people especially those who are not well grounded in their faith. Packaging is very attractive, especially for churches who do not engage with the in the Bible as much as they should. So I'm very thankful that churches like Pantai Baptist Church, uh, we are very much engaging with the Word together. Thankful for faithful servants like Pastor Wallace, every CG leader, every elder, uh, yeah. every elder, every deacon who is anything we do, we engage with the word together and that keeps a very firm uh, worldview that is not easily persuaded by this these sort of uh, 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 um, uh, vague and 
misleading offerings of come let's study the Bible together. In fact, many of our young people can teach the Bible pretty well already. And that gives them a good firm assurance to say where they're at in the gospel does not need any other further revelation. I think it's also good at this juncture that we encourage our church members to uh, not be not be racially discriminating. So not every Korean or Korean is a cult member. No, uh, uh, there are faithful witnesses of the gospel in South Korea. In fact, South Korea is the second largest missionary sending country among evangelicals. Yes. So they are faithful witness. They are sharing the true gospel. We just have to make sure that when we get to know them, uh, we also know where they're coming from, what they believe in, uh, just like how we should do for any newcomer into the church. Always get to know them better before we pass judgment. Brothers and sisters, are there any questions that you'd like to ask about this cult or basically anything that we've discussed in the past few weeks regarding Christian cults? Why do we bother with Shin Shonji when there are more urgent matters to attend and focus on positive mission persons? Would anyone like to try to answer that question first? Well, I'll take a stab at it first then. Um, thankfully, we are able to do both. So I'm very glad that the likes of Pantai Church is supporting missionaries and mission partners throughout the world. And we are focusing to post and, and we are more focused on positive evangelism and disciple making. That's why we have CE and CG. That's why we have GEM. And that's why we are talking seriously about the gospel and the implications towards membership and leadership and missions. I think that's a very positive way of going about it. Change G, therefore, and the likes of these other cults is good for us to know so that we so that we can warn the other believers uh, so that they will not fall into the trap of these of, of this uh, of these uh, false teachings yeah so discipleship is equally being fed with the gospel of god in through the holy scriptures and also avoiding uh, avoiding false teachings and false doctrines like the ones we've been talking about i think it's definitely good that we have gone through all this uh, cow uh, honestly, I I know about cow, but it's all from the old type of cow. But these are the modern cow. So we look like cow is just changing every other day. And we do not catch up. Uh, we, we actually will, might be deceived in the sense because they're disguised so well like Christian themselves. Uh, even though we spent quite a few weeks on uh, cows, uh, but I don't think we are paying a lot of attention to them, just that we get to know what's around us. And uh, we have gone through many weeks of mission. So definitely our church is uh, focused more on mission than cult. But we need to know all the evil things that's around us. I think it's good that we learn. Yeah, I think as church leaders and elders, we have a duty of care for our flock. We have to also act as the gatekeeper, as well as the watchtower lookout. We have to see what is coming next that may disturb our flock. And we have to be one step ahead of them. And even when they come in, we should be able to spot them and to eradicate them from the flock and warn our people. Of course, we are not focusing all the time on this. But it is always good you know, to have them within our sight rather than be surprised totally after they have infiltrated the whole church, then it's too late. 
I think BBC is having a very balanced view of things. I've been involved in missions for more than 10 years. So I know what we do. We are also focused on uh, outreach. We are helping a lot of uh, mission partners overseas, as well as locally. So we are not neglecting the word at all. I think the preaching of the word is very strong. And uh, Baptist churches are quite, quite uh, well known for being very strong in the word, which is very good. I think we are not neglecting that, but we are not also uh, running away from, from that to, to now uh, chase after the cows. We, 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 we are not by any means doing that. So we have a balanced view of things, but it's always good to be vigilant. Look out for wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Not only our church, uh, I'm privileged in the sense that recently I joined the mission board and I've been to uh, Sambuna and things like that. Uh, it actually opened my eyes. Uh, uh, sorry that I was blind before. There are a lot of work carried out by a lot of faithful servants throughout whole Malaysia. right? In Sambuna and Tawau, it's only one portion of it. But uh, if I never go there, I really didn't know that God is doing so much work. And then I went there, I mean, our whole team is so blessed in the sense that we realize that the servant of God is really working uh, in all areas, reaching out to the stateless people, reaching out to the, our own people, so on and so forth. Uh, recently, also, I visited Clang, uh, El Shaddai, and again, it opened my eyes that the tremendous amount of work they are doing, the mission work they are reaching out in educating the stateless children, and we are talking about thousand students they are handling. So I I, I think uh let me take, let me take the opportunity to invite uh, all of you to have a bit more uh interest in the mission not only our church but mission that's done around us. Right. So that's why when we came back we decided to really want to share what we have seen in uh in Sapa. Uh, in the last uh, physical prayer meeting. Uh, unfortunately, not many had attended. But I think those who had heard our sharing would realize that and praise God for what he is doing in uh, Sapa. Thank you a little bit. I just received an email from a friend. I will not name him here. And uh, it's a very sad situation. He he forwarded me a, an, another email from his friend. And uh, here's what he said. Hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm from Singapore. I chanced upon the video from Reddit. And the video is this video or the part one video on Shincheonji cult. Yeah. He wanted to share that, unfortunately, his family found out that his sister is currently in Shincheonji, had been for five years and is heavily indoctrinated. They have been struggling to get her out. In fact, they only find out, found out after two years uh, that she is in Shincheonji because she was one of the people who got arrested because it is illegal in Singapore as Shincheonji is not recognized in Singapore as an approved religious organization. Uh, the brother of this of this Shinchonji fellow wants to warn us to say that uh, she is planning she and a team is planning to do God's work there in Johor Bahru. So she's wanting to come over the border into JB under the guise of finding work, but actually they want to expand Shinchonji there. So I just wanted to write this email so that we can warn our friends in JB about the activity there and we and they advise us please discern and ask clarifying questions on the origins of the group and don't join the groups and to tell them to hide it from their family and friends. So Shin Chongji, the reason why we are having to dig about all this information is because the young people are usually advised from early on to not share about their endeavor of their studying the Bible together. They will come from an angle 
to say that, look, uh, we are a Bible studying seminar and we understand sometimes churches can be jealous. And so rather than having that confrontation up front, why not we just do the Bible quiet, Bible study quietly and maybe you can tell them later. So they encourage their people, they encourage the young people to lie about their endeavor and that's why we seldom catch them until it's too late. Yeah. So this partially answers the other question. Are we also sharing these truths about cults with our youth and young adults? I'm uh, happy to say yes. Uh, we are making every effort to make sure that the young people in our church know about this cult. And one of the things that we do is, as soon as we're done with this lecture, we put it up on YouTube and we share it openly to our young people so that they are aware of all of these misleading teachings and suspicious groups. So indeed, the youth and young adults are, are, the, are, the, are the real flock that we are trying to guard and defend. Yeah. Any verbal questions, anyone? So some things that we can do with regards to our young people is maybe we can actually ask them, you know, what groups do they hang out with online or physically? You know, uh, and some of them will say, oh, you know, I joined this gaming group and so on and so forth. And then they might say they have joined a Bible study group. It's good to check and see what kind of Bible study group they are joining, making sure that they are, they are from solid evangelical sources because otherwise they might be part of this, uh, this uh, covert help group. While we're waiting for other questions, I'm just I'd just like to announce that the next two weeks we will be talking about uh, another variation of cults that is what I would like to call gospel plus. For the past few weeks, we've been talking about gospel about all these cults where very clearly they are gospel minus. So the Mormon Church, for example, they are the gospel minus the divinity, the the, the the divine origin of Jesus Christ. So they think Jesus is human that became God and therefore the implications is all of us humans can become gods if we follow after their version of Jesus. So that is gospel minus the divinity of Jesus. Yeah. The other, uh, like Jehovah's Witness, is the gospel minus Jesus entirely. Next week we'll be talking about gospel plus. There are some groups out there that uh, will insist that we as, cult, we as uh, Christians must believe in the gospel plus additional things. And if we don't believe in that, we will, they will look at us and say, then we're not truly Christian. Yeah. So we will be looking at some parameters of that, how we can engage, how we can engage and protect ourselves from that. And uh, yeah, making sure that we are really the true gospel bearers, simple and plain on the life, ministry, death and resurrection Jesus. Yeah, so we will be talking about that in the final two weeks of this year's uh this year's uh, BEC. One question in the chat is why don't churches always highlight of any incident every Sunday or update of any cult activities in action, if any? So why don't we announce these on Sundays. Well, let me defend myself by saying whenever I see relevant to scripture emphasis, yes, I will definitely put it out there. Yeah, uh, that'll be one thing. Another way that we can move forward from here is perhaps for the pastoral prayer. Once in a while, we highlight, you know, uh, a prayer to make sure that we remain steadfast in the good news of Jesus and not be persuaded by the false teachings of the day. 
and it can and it's not just and it's not just these fundamental cults like the Mormons and Jehovah's Witness. It can also be uh, churches and groups that are teaching the gospel and prosperity or the gospel and healing ministry that that tends to rampantly take other poor, unfortunate people's uh, uh, money. You know, So that's definitely something we can pray against in the name of Jesus during the pastoral prayer or even what we can do uh, as we pray uh, collectively as a church doing our, our weekly prayer meetings online and physical once a month. I think there's also some negative effect if we promote, if we if we alert about cults every week, right? Uh, uh, it, it, and the, the our service will end up being less of a of a of a celebration of the victory in Jesus and more about, oh, we have to be careful of this group or that group. Are there any other questions? Going one, going twice. Very well. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for your attention for tonight. Perhaps at this juncture, maybe for a change, can I invite, invite Brother Abraham to close tonight's session with a word of prayer? And uh, uh, don't forget to join us next week as we then change gears from gospel minus cults to now gospel plus cults. Yeah. So over to you, Brother Abraham. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Pastor. Um, good evening, everyone. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Father, for this evening, oh, Father. Thank you, Father, for the teachings that we have for God to warn us against, Father, this uh, cult of Xinjiang, oh, Father. As far as we do recognize, oh, God, there are many groups out there, Father, some very small, some bigger ones, oh, God, who are out to try to mislead people, Father. Of course, some of them may think from their perspective that theirs is the truth, oh, God. Help us to be, Father, ingrained in your word, oh God, Father, that scripture stands up, stands above all, Father, that they may read your Bible, O oh God, and let the Holy Spirit to lead us to have the right understanding, Father. And help us, O oh God, that we will also uh, be able to warn our friends and others, O oh God, especially those, O oh God, who are, who are Father, you, when you realize that they have some inclination towards some of these cults, O oh God, as some of these cults can be quite misleading in the way in the way that they present themselves, Father. Thank you for Pastor Mark, Father. We thank you for Brother Thong, Brother Thong and uh, Dr. Tony Fu, Father, uh, on the panel as well, Father. Be with them and help us, O oh God, as we, as, we, uh, as we retire for the night, O oh God, and we look forward, O oh God, to the, the next session, O oh God, next week. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, brothers, sisters. Lord bless you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Good night.